Hi, welcome to Logic. My name is Matt, and this is a quick video giving you an introduction to arguments. So we use this term arguments in lots of different ways, and in this class we're going to be learning a very specific way of defining that term, because it doesn't just mean like a heated exchange between people where you're yelling at each other, but it's got a very specific meaning. So here's our definition straight from the book. We're using Hurley's Concise Introduction to Logic. An argument's a group of statements, one of which provides support for or reasons to believe one of the other ones. So, in order to understand what an argument is, you've got to understand this idea of supporting. In any argument, there's going to be some support, some of the statements are supporting, and the we're going to call the statements that do the supporting the premises, and the statements or statement that is being supported, we're going to call the conclusion. You've probably heard the word conclusion before, but premises is usually reserved for philosophy and logic. So here's an example. One and two provide support for the conclusion. The conclusion is being supported by those two statements. All men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Those two support that conclusion. So if you accept the first two, then you should accept the third one. All right. In order to understand that definition, you need to understand all the terms in the definition. We've already talked about premises and conclusions. Now we need to talk about statement. And statement has a specific definition too. A statement must be a complete sentence that is either true or false. And this is to say that statements have truth value. And don't let truth value throw you off because the truth value of a statement can be true or it can be false. We could say that a statement has a false truth value. Arguments must be composed of these sentences that are true or false. They can't be composed of, sen of sentences that aren't the kinds of things that can be true or false. So sometimes people ask rhetorical questions and they mean these to be arguments, but rhetorical questions are not statements because they're not sentences that are either true or false. So if you ask questions, then you have not given an argument. All right, we've already talked about premises and conclusion. Let's talk about statements just a little bit more. Give you some examples. So this first one, ice cream is high in calories, is a statement because it's true. I mean, what's high in calories is probably relative, but for most purposes and most contexts, we'll say that this is true. I love cookies. This was a little more tricky. So some students don't think this is a statement because it's like a preference, but as a statement that's spoken by someone, it can be something that's true or false. So if I say, I love cookies, my wife makes delicious chocolate chip oatmeal cookies. And so I can say, I love cookies. And that's a true statement because it's true when I say it. But if you imagine somebody who doesn't love cookies saying, I love cookies, then they're saying something that's false. They don't love cookies and they're saying, I love cookies. So this is something that can be true or false. So we'll count this as a statement exclamations or commands like this like shut the door these are not statements it doesn't even make sense when you hear somebody say shut the door and you're like uh, i don't know whether that's true or false because it's not the kind of thing that's true or false so any kind of commands are not statements um, unfortunately this one is false from last year so it is a statement questions i mentioned questions before one way to think about this is when someone asks a question like where's my phone you don't think just the same way that you think of um, the commands you don't think true or false that doesn't even make sense to say where's my phone false so it's not a statement and this is especially important and when you're writing argumentative essays because some people like to have a whole paragraph full of rhetorical questions and claim that this is an argument a part of an argument but these questions are not statements, so they can't be parts of arguments. They can be rhetorically effective, but you're, uh, you're hoping or assuming that the audience is going to ask the, answer the question in the way that you want it to be answered. And they might not. That these only work if somebody already agrees with you. So these are not statements, and we cannot use them technically in arguments. The Pope thinks abortion is wrong. This one is also a statement. It has to do with what the current Pope thinks. And I'm pretty sure that he thinks that abortion is wrong. So this one is true. So it counts as a statement. The color seven smells like loud. 
is this true or false? Well, it doesn't even make sense. This is just a collection of words. It's not a complete sentence, so it can't count as a statement. Finally, torturing puppies for the fun of it is morally wrong. This one, if this were a class in ethics, would be controversial. Because there are some theories of ethics that say that moral sentences like this one that claim that something's right or wrong are not actually statements because they don't have a truth value. But we're going to table that. We're going to put that aside for the purposes of this class. In logic, we're going to count these as statements because it's obvious, at least to me, this one is obviously true that torturing puppies for the fun of it is morally wrong. So we're counting this one as a statement. All right, finally. In order to recognize an argument, one of the things that you can do is look for indicator words. Good writers use indicator words in order to be signposts to help the reader follow the flow of the argument. So I'm, just, I'm not going to read all these. We've got these here and we've got them in the book. But these are common conclusion and premise indicator words that you will see when you come across arguments in print or if you're listening to someone give an argument you might also see these so we've seen words like therefore but it's also important to know the common premise indicator words and other common conclusion indicator words that you don't run across as often in everyday language but you will run across these in this class or if you study philosophy in more detail all right so that's the basics so a primer that will get you going when it comes to recognizing arguments. In the next video, we will go into a little bit more detail in how to recognize arguments.